What's up guys, it's Mike with Shallow Reef and come back at you with another video and today I'm gonna be making some DIY dosing containers cause I need to start dosing this tank. It's sucking up a ton of alkalinity and calcium. So let's get started. So you might be saying, Mike, why don't you just buy some dosing containers? Well, I really, really wanted to buy the Aquamax dosing containers cause they're about the best bang for your buck. But if you do remember, hmm, Aquamax and their shipping was horrible. Nothing against Marine Depot, nothing against the Postal Service, but uh, yeah, that shipping was real bad. So I don't feel like risking it and I already bought the stuff and it was surprisingly cheap. So let's get into it. So what do we need for this DIY project? As you can see, we got two BRS space saving jugs. They come in at one gallon each, actually four liters, and they cost me $11. So 22 bucks for that because they were on sale. We also need quarter inch push connect fittings from uh, BRS. I got these and they were um, real cheap. They were $3.99 each, again for $3.39. So you're talking about like seven bucks for those. Also, we got a 16 inch acrylic tubing. Now this acrylic tubing is very cheap. It was $2.49 for the pair, so $5. So for 44 bucks, I get all this. So let's get started. And yes, I do have a whipped topping container because I always have that stuff, you know, just laying around because I need to dip corals because there'll be some more corals coming in the future. Stay tuned for that one. Now, what you're gonna need is a three quarter inch drill bit for this uh, push connect fitting bulkhead. And as you can see, out of all my drill bits, I only go up to a half inch. So this will probably not work for me or I could use a stepper bit, which I do not have as well. Hmm, what am I gonna do? I think I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna do it with the half inch drill bit and then I'm gonna kind of like swirl it around a little bit, make it a little big. It's not gonna be perfect, but also I don't really want this to be airtight because when I'm drawing the liquid out of the dosing container, I really need some air to come in or else I'm gonna create a vacuum and gonna compress the container inward. And that is definitely not something I wanna do. So let's see if my idea works. So let's see. I mean, it doesn't look too bad, honestly. I mean, you can see that. It's gonna be really close, three quarter inch. I mean, this is just a half inch. That's gonna be pretty close. All right, let's do this. Now, I don't wanna drill it with the lid on here because I don't want all the you know shavings to get in the container. So I'm gonna take the lid off and then get started. I'll probably put it here and probably put some wood underneath of it to support it. So the key for this is to drill directly in the center. Luckily, there's a little small spot directly in the center. Keep going. All right. Let's see how this looks. Oh, look. There's a little spot in here I could have taken out earlier. Oh well, it's fine. It's not too bad. So as you can see, the half inch does not fit very well. So what I'm gonna do is kind of, you know, make it a little sloppy, go around, kind of shave it a little bit off, and then pop it back on and see if it works. Really wishing I had a stepper bit right now. It might have been beneficial for me to buy it, but I have all these drill bits. Clearly I'm ready. Well, unless you need a three quarter inch drill bit, of course. So I took the file and kind of filed this a little bit wider, and it is pretty symmetrical, I'd say. Fits pretty easy in here, kind of just screw it in let the grooves kind of go. But what I didn't realize is that I did have a paddle bit and I wonder if I could have just used the paddle bit. It would save me a lot of time because you know, filing this was not the easiest, but it didn't take too long. But if I would just use a paddle bit, it would have been in and out in a couple seconds. Now let's just screw this in because I'm kind of running it with the grooves. Make sure that it's flush now at the bottom and then put the little bulkhead, tighten it up. And that is how easy that is. Of course, it'd be easier if I had the right size bit or a stepper bit, but you know. So as you can see, this is about uh, three inches too tall. So we want it to be at the bottom or as close to the bottom as possible. And it's probably about two inches too big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off about, eh, well, it's about two and a quarter inches too big. 
about two and a quarter inches and hope that it gets to the bottom. Um, we want it to be just a smidge off the bottom. That way, you know, you pull up everything from the bottom of it. You don't waste any space, but you also don't get any of the gunk that could accumulate at the bottom of the, um, the container. So I actually have like these craft or craftsman shears and they end up working really well. So I'm gonna use this. I mean, obviously you can get, um, you know, any type of snips or anything like that, as long as you can make a straight cut. And as you can see, this is a very straight blade. So let's get to cutting this. All right, so about right there. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, it's like, I don't know. That's too close to the bottom, you can see. Just a little off. Let's cut off another like quarter of an inch. You can see that's perfect now. It's all the way at the bottom. There we go. All right, and there you have it. Now there's one thing you need to do, and that is to put a tiny hole right back there. And that is to allow some of the air to come in so you don't create like a big vacuum on the inside of this. Granted, I, you could loosen the lids. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna drill some holes in the back. Um, obviously, I don't think that these are completely airtight right here, um, right around the rim. I think they're close, but I just wanna be a little bit safe and just put some holes in the back. So let's hope I don't put a ton of pressure and break the bit. Yeah, I'm almost done actually, I'm just doing this. And for the other one, just making sure I got some pressure on it, don't break the bit, and hopefully, just like the last one, all the plastic will come out. Just like that, all right, perfect. And we have it. Now all I gotta do is label them, fill them up, and then hook them up. So I will get to the shot of that. I'll see you guys in about eh, 10 minutes, maybe. I gotta get it down from the top of the garage in my box of fish stuff. Oh, here we go, I gotta climb it up. All right, and there you have it, I have it set up. Now I connected it to the beer acid dosing uh, pumps, the 1.1 milliliter a minute ones, because I got them from a dude for a great price, 20 bucks each can't pass it up when they're normally, you know, $70. So bought those and then I hooked up the DIY dosing containers. Now I know I have like a rat's nest, but trust me, it'll get better. So I just stuck these to the side of my quarantine tank and I have the lines running into the sump. Super easy to get this all going. Um, one of the things that I would say about these space saving containers is you are gonna have to take off uh, the dosing line when you want to pull them out but I mean it's not that big of a deal the hardest part was actually pouring the liquid into the container I would recommend getting two separate funnels because you don't want to pour um, this is the alkalinity you don't want to pour the alkalinity in here then use the same funnel and pour the calcium in here with the same funnel because there could be a precipitant that forms and you do not want that but this was an actually really easy DIY build if I would have remembered that I had a paddle bit that was three quarter inch instead of using a half inch uh, drill and then having to file the rest of it and get the hole open. But you know, I'm stupid sometimes and don't think things through. I just run and gun as they say. Now I know what you're thinking. This looks like a rat's nest over here. And yes, it does, but it's not part of the final plan. Part of the master plan, once this is all done, once I have all the fish out of quarantine and we're talking like six months from now, Hopefully, I'll sell some coral, make some money, because this whole thing will be gone. And over here will be a nice, innovative marine APS stand where I can put a frag tank on the top of it. That is the ideal location for this. And with that frag tank being here, I'll have way more space under here. I'll make it nice. I won't have all these extra cords because I won't be running extra pieces of equipment. And it should be pretty straightforward and everything should be great in theory. We will see. So guys, that's all I got for you this time. Easy DIY container project and a little bit update on my uh, janky little uh,
quarantine tank stain where I have all my odds and ends for equipment and my dosing containers. But I will see you guys next time. What's up guys, it's Mike with Shallow Reef and coming back at you with another video. And today I'm gonna be making some dosing containers using some DIY methods. Oh my God, my camera freaked out. Let's try that again.